I don't know about you, but personally, I like getting a lot of bang for my buck. That's why I'm such a big fan of mini PCs like this. They're of course small, as the name implies, but more importantly, they pack a ton of performance in that small form factor, usually for not a lot of money. But there is kind of a problem with them, at least for me. It seems like a perfect home lab or a server for your small business. Look, they've even got dual 10 gigabit networking right there. That's SFP, that's enterprise, baby. But you know what's not enterprise? If you have any problem with these dang machines and your operating system crashes or what have you, you just, you can't access it anymore. There's no remote management like you would get in a server that allows you to, to fix stuff remotely even if the computer is brokey. And that's where this comes into play. And thanks to a sponsorship from GLINet, we're gonna be checking out their comment. It aims to solve that problem. You can take pretty much any computer you have, uh, whether it be a, a beefy minis forum or your desktop or hell, a computer in a factory if you want, an embedded machine, and allows you to add remote management. So if you have a problem with the machine, you can still access it. And this one in particular is pretty cool because it doesn't rely on you having to, you know, configure some fancy schmancy VPN or whatever. Through their software, they already have the remote management functionality built in, at least that's what they've told me. So you should be able to just take this bag roll, we'll go over the ports in a second, plug it into your computer and um, be off to the races, ready to control it from anywhere without having to do any network wizardry, which sounds pretty sweet from the get-go. Oh, this is nice. I like these flat ethernet cables. How long do you think this is? It's an 80 centimeter cable. That's an oddly specific length. And then we've got a USB A to C cable, which I assume is to power the thing, but we'll find out in a sec. And that one is 100 centimeters ish. I'm measuring this properly. Look how scientific this is. It's like taut even. <laughs> But enough of cables, let's take a look at the actual star of the show, the Comet itself. It's a nice like uh, anodized aluminum housing. I like that because I, I honestly, I feel like I could just toss this in my backpack and not be worried about damaging it. We've got a USB 2.0 type A port, HDMI. Like to be clear, it's a KVM. It can do 4K, which is cool. We'll get into that a little bit more later, but don't expect to be doing 4K, you know, 144 Hertz or something like that. It's not for gaming, it's for remote management. Uh, we've got the USB Type-C port, and if we look really closely, you can actually see uh, a keyboard and a mouse icon. So I suspect that that's what you'll use to take this thing, bloop, and plug it into a computer and actually send your keyboard and mouse commands remotely to that computer. Uh, maybe also provide power, but we'll see in a sec. There's another port, okay. Wait, that says five volt, two amps. Do I need two? Yes. Okay, we'll get to that in a sec. And then we have ethernet because of course, you need to network this thing to be able to talk to it remotely. And on the back, what's this, a reset button? What does that do? I don't know. I guess we'll find out, let's plug it in. And since it is so perfect for this, I am quite literally just going to use this minis forum as our remote computer. We've got our A to C cable for HID or the uh, human interface device, otherwise known as a keyboard and mouse. So we'll plug that into our minis forum here. And then we have a USB-C power cable. So there is two separate cables. You need five volt, two amp. Uh, it does actually come with the USB power cable. It's just that our unit is like a really early sample. Uh, so it didn't come with it. But if you buy one, it will come with both the USB cables you need and an HDMI and of course the ethernet we talked about before. All right, we've got the GLKVM app installed. I'm logged in. Let's add the device. Hey, look at that right there. It's immediately caught it. Add device, we'll name this Minis Forum Guardian. Yeah, binding device, successfully bound. Oh, GLKVM would like to add VPN configurations. Interesting. Wow, there's a lot of stuff in here. However, we don't have an output right now because our computer is off. Oh, hey, look, look at that. Minis form, LTT, let's go. Immediately, it's, it's up and running. Let's dive into GLKVM. We've got two-factor authentication, dark mode. Oh, thank God. Yes, virtual keyboard. We've got audio. Did you hear that? I just got the Windows like boot sound through my MacBook. Let's go to lossless quality mode. I want that, I want that full, full quality. This does have a quad core ARM processor in it. So it can do 4K30 hardware accelerated encoding, which means the like lossless quality mode should still perform really good. Obviously, if you're remote, like you're on the other side of the country, you're gonna have the inherent latency of your connection, right? Uh, but this seems like, obviously on the same internet connection, really good. There's obviously some input delay, but it's 
it's not much. Now, if you're planning to use the Comet with a like actual ATX desktop computer, they do sell, or you can buy it in a bundle, this accessory, uh, it's like a little PCIe card that doesn't actually connect, uh, it just sits in the slot. Um, you connect that to the Comet with a USB-C cable, and then you plug this guy, which if you look really closely, actually has labels for power button and stuff into the headers of your computer. And then I think you can actually even pass it through with these extra set of ports so your power button still works. But then since it's actually physically connected, the Comet can send a like physical button press of the power button, the reset button, all of those sort of things, so that if your operating system does crash, you still have that physical control. That would mean you could also get into the BIOS, for instance, if the operating system was like fully crashed, which is really the main selling feature here. So for an ATX computer, this is perfect. It doesn't work with our minis forum, so <laughs> they actually came up with a solution for that too, uh, which I guess would work with like a, if you had a Mac or something like that. Uh, which is this, it's called a finger bot. Look, there's a button in there, I press the button and... I'm sure you can see where this is going, right? <laughs> it's a little finger bot, uh, which I guess we can stick to the front of our minis for them and use it to turn it on. Is that what this USB-A is for? Because there's there's a little like wireless dongle. It looks like a, like a, a mouse dongle. Okay, that must be what this is for. It turned it on! Ah! Now the finger bot isn't something that they include by default, it is an accessory, but if you need it, this could be a pretty useful little add-on here. Now if you were gonna buy this yourself, you probably wanna let this adhesive cure for like 24 hours before you try it. But for me, I really just need it to work like once or twice, and then actually I do want it to come off. So I'm just gonna full send it right now, and hopefully that doesn't fall off on the very first try. Oh, accessories, finger bot. Strength, lightly press. Oh, oh, oh! Wait, I see what the thingies are for now. It like clips into the end. It's like an extender. And they're like a little pusher things. Obviously with something that's like physical like this, you know, there's gonna be a little bit of trial and error to get it how it should be. But once you got this dialed in, it is a mildly hilarious, but also totally practical way to deal with something like this. You also could take the ATX board and like solder it to the power button on the minis form, I'm sure if you really wanted to, but this way, no modifications required. You can also hook this finger bot up to like a power switch or like a, a reset button on a, a power bar or something like that maybe, so that if something was really dead and really not responsive, even to the power button, you could shut the power off with that, that would be, Pretty smart, let's try this again. Did it press? Yeah. It works! And you can even change the time to be like eight seconds or something like that, so you can you can like hard shut it down. You know, it's not responsive. Hold the power button until it's off, off. So we're doing 2560 by 1440. Can I change the resolution to 4K? Okay, I tried to set the thing to 4K and I couldn't figure it out. And then I realized there's a software update. There's a bunch of settings that are missing because we haven't done the software update. Oopsie, here we go. Now we can change it to 4K. So the highest resolution you can do at 60 FPS is 1440p, which is great. But if we wanna do 4K, we gotta drop it down to 30. This is changing the EDID, which is basically like uh, the information your monitor sends to your computer to tell it what resolution and refresh rate it can do. Or in this case, our monitor, which is the GLI net comet. It's basically just telling the computer, yeah, now I can do 4K. There we go, beautiful. 3840 by 2160. Uh, you can also make custom EDID. It's not exactly the easiest thing in the world to figure out how to do custom EDID if you haven't ever done it before, but there's some online tools for it if you really need it for whatever reason. I mean, even at 30 FPS, the latency is still pretty good. Uh, we can rotate the monitor, we've got dark mode, we've got a virtual keyboard, that's a nice touch. Ooh, I like the way that comes up from the bottom. We've got audio support. What if I play a YouTube video or something? We've got clipboard, that's huge. If you're like remoting into a machine, you're trying to like boot into a recovery environment, for instance, uh, having to like type out commands, which sometimes can be really long, <laughs> is a huge pain in the butt, especially if you have like a disaster uh, response plan and you already know what commands you need to do. This way you can just paste something in here like, Jake likes small computers, ha ha ha, cool. And then if we open up a text box and click paste, boom. We've got a wake on land feature, which is pretty cool if you got that configured. Virtual media, oh. 
Can I mount a... Yo? How about this blender image? Okay, now I can mount this file sharing wise, which I guess should give me just like a folder. Yeah, there we go. There's a folder. We've got our blender file. We can copy it over. Sweet. 30 megabytes a second. Wow. Okay. But really what's the more important version of this functionality is image mounting. So say you need to reinstall your operating system remotely, you could upload like an Ubuntu ISO or Proxmox or TrueNAS or whatever it is, and then you can mount it like an ISO, reboot the machine, which in our case would be with the SwitchBot, and then you can install an operating system again without having to go anywhere near the computer, fully remote. We've got TailScale in the App Center. Then I guess I can access this over TailScale rather than the built-in VPN, which is nice if you uh, if you want to be able to have control over over the remote connection and and tunnel it through your own stuff. All right, last thing I want to try here. We've got a 8K YouTube video playing. I just want to like use this to get an, a vibe for how the compression looks and in the full quality mode. It looks great, it's responsive, definitely responsive enough to do the stuff you'd need to do, especially if it was just a terminal. We got our finger bot, that works. We've got tail scale. It's basically got all of the features um, that you could want in a KVM. It doesn't have a web page level kind of access yet. You need to use the app, so that's something to keep in mind. But if you're looking to pick up a GLINet Comet KVM like this one right here, um, also keep in mind that they're coming out with a PoE version. And if you're not familiar, that basically just means instead of needing USB-C power, you'll power this thing over the ethernet cable that plugs into it. So if you had this in a server room or maybe in an industrial application where you already have ethernet, you don't need to somehow figure out USB power, just PoE. And overall, seems like a pretty great KVM. It doesn't make any noise. It does what it says it does. The quality and latency is great. It's got lots of customization and you can check it out down at the link in the description where you can also check out maybe another video you could watch. Like how about the time that I unboxed this particular mini's forum at CES. That was fun. I'm gonna unbox it again because it's a new version. Cool, right?